I was on my way to drop out of college when I got a text from a girl named Joanna in my psychology class. She said there was a new lab in town offering $20,000 to people to volunteer for some medical experiment. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. You see, I didn't want to drop out of college, I just couldn't afford it. I'd flunked a few tests and my parents had stopped paying for my tuition fees because they were so disappointed in me. Well, I'd show them. I'd sign up for this experiment and get my cash dollar. I messaged Joanna back and asked her where I could sign up. She said she was driving over there now and would pick me up. Wow, this was too good to be true. When we pulled up at the address, I was a bit confused. It didn't even look like a hospital or anything. In fact, it looked a bit creepy. We walked towards the entrance, and I seriously felt like we were about to be murdered or something. The door slid open, and inside, everything was white. It was so bright, I actually pulled my shades down. There was no one around, so I said, Hello? Nervously. And suddenly, a man in a lab coat appeared from behind a glass door. I told him we were here for the experiment, and he handed us a bunch of forms to fill out, and said he'd be back in ten minutes. I gulped. Was I actually doing this? But then, a woman came out from another door, and she looked right at me and said, This is the best thing you'll ever do. Well, that was settled then. I filled out the form, which was super basic. All it really asked for was my bank account details. Well, at least they were definitely going to pay me. That was all that mattered. I needed that money badly. Joanna went looking for the bathroom, and when the man in the lab coat appeared again, she wasn't back yet. I wanted to wait for her, and he said she'd already got started. I told him she'd left her bag, and he grabbed it and said, Come on then, are you doing this or not? We haven't got all day, you know. I reminded myself of the money and followed him. Then I realized there was glass everywhere, but I couldn't see anything. I asked the man about it, and he said it was only glass on one side. The medical professionals inside could see me, but I couldn't see them. I wondered which room Joanna was in, and then as we turned a corner, I heard what sounded like her voice, and it sounded like she was panicking. My whole gut was screaming no, and yet I kept following the man. He told me just to ignore the sounds, that the new lab technician had hurt her hand that morning and was in a lot of pain. Something wasn't right about this. But then he took me into a room, and it was filled with sofas and beanbags and soft music, and I instantly felt relaxed. He asked me to take a seat, and then offered me tea, and I thought to myself, okay, this isn't so bad. So what is this experiment exactly, I asked, and sipped my tea. And the man laughed and said it was harmless, just an experiment to test my memory. He said they were conducting a study on how to store memories, so that when people got Alzheimer's, they could implant these memories back into their head. Whoa, I thought. My grandma should have done this then. She actually did have Alzheimer's. Surely I was too young for this, I said to him, but he replied with, the younger, the better. Then he asked me to follow him again. The next room had lots of machines and wires, and it felt like a hospital. I took a seat, and he started attaching wires to my head. He said he would ask me a series of questions, and the wires would record my brainwaves along with the memories. Then, the next time I came to the lab, they'd test my memory again to see if anything changed. Hang on. Next time? I told him I thought this was a one-off thing, and he just smiled and said, For $20,000, you need to come twice. Didn't you read the small print? Then he hooked me up to the machine, and I won't lie, it hurt. I felt like my brain was being squashed. The first question he asked me was, What was the saddest thing to ever happen to you? And I described to him in detail when my little sister was in a car crash, and how she had died, and how our family hadn't been the same ever since. Then he asked me about the happiest moment of my life. And I honestly didn't know. I couldn't think of anything. And then I decided it was probably the day Damien asked me to be his girlfriend last year. The questions continued. All kinds of random questions. And then after a while, I really started feeling sick. My head felt fuzzy, and I couldn't remember anything. I must have fallen asleep, because I woke up on the sofa in the nice room, and the man was standing there telling me I could go home now, and that I should come back in one month for the second part of the experiment. And what about the money? I asked him. He said they'd deposit the first half into my account before the end of the week. Then he opened the door, and I took that as my signal to leave. The first thing I did when I got out of there was to try and call Joanna, but she wasn't answering, and her car wasn't there anymore. I couldn't believe she'd just leave me there alone. I only made it about 50 meters before I had to stop. Suddenly, I didn't even know where I was going. I grabbed onto a nearby wall and slid down onto the ground, clutching my head. I took a headache tablet and hoped the pain would go away, but it kept getting worse. Somehow, I made it home. That night, I fell asleep really early, and the next day, I woke up to some missed calls from Joanna. When I got to college later that morning, I saw her in the courtyard chatting to Damien. I hadn't even known she had a boyfriend. She was flirting with him, and I marched right up to her and asked why she'd just left me yesterday. She said she hadn't been feeling well, so she rushed home. Then she gave Damien a hug goodbye and asked if we could talk. I didn't want to talk to her. I felt like hitting her. But I wanted to know if she'd received the money yet. She said she hadn't, but that it would come soon. Then she said she'd been feeling kind of emotional since yesterday. I told her I just felt sick, and then suddenly she was crying. She said she missed her sister so much, and life was just really sad without her in it. I felt bad for her. I couldn't imagine losing a sister. I mean, I was an only child, so I didn't even know what it felt like.
But then I got a message from my mom asking if I could pick up flowers on the way home for Amy's grave, and I had no idea who Amy was. My head felt fuzzy, and all I could think about was the clock ticking. If I didn't pay my tuition before the end of the month, I'd be kicked out of college. That day I passed out in class. Luckily it was in psychology, so Joanna was there too. She was the one who brought me water, and when I'd woken up, she said she was worried about the experiment and that we should go back and tell them how we were feeling. We drove over there and everything looked the same as yesterday, except this time the doors didn't open when we pressed the button. We sat and waited for a while, and eventually a guy came out a side door smoking a cigarette. He was on his phone, so while he was distracted we slipped inside. Oh my gosh, it was like a glass maze in there. I was freaked out knowing they could see us, and then I heard voices. Listen man, I don't know what happened, the memories aren't on the database, I messed up man. And then I heard, oh crap, look who it is. And then the same man from the day before came through a door and asked what we wanted. I told him I'd passed out and been having extreme headaches and said that I thought it was his fault. Then I demanded my money. He asked how we'd gotten inside and said we were trespassing and that he'd call the police if we didn't leave immediately. I was shocked. I told him we would call the police if he didn't pay us the money he owed us. I was really starting to regret this stupid experiment. Joanna and I left and said if we didn't get the money by the end of the week, we'd go to the police for reals. But then things just started getting worse. The headaches were unbearable and I went home without the flowers and my mom was super mad at me. We got in the car and she said it was not okay for me to just forget about my sister like this. I didn't understand. I asked mom if she was feeling all right and said this was kind of weird because I'd never had a sister. And then she just lost it. She told me I was acting like a selfish brat and then she told me to get out of the car and that she'd go to the graveyard alone and pick up some tulips herself. I got out and the headaches came back. I messaged Joanna and said I really didn't feel well, and then she said we could meet in an hour at the coffee shop near the park. It started to rain and Joanna still hadn't arrived so I called her. She said she was in the graveyard and so I walked over there. Then I saw my mom driving by. She wound down the window and said she'd see me at home, then drove off. I wandered into the graveyard and saw Joanna sitting next to a grave. There were some beautiful tulips there, just like the ones my mom always had at home. And then Joanna said this was her sister's grave. I looked at the name and said to her, but that's not your surname, that's my surname. And she said it had confused her too. Then my phone rang and it was Damien. He said that Joanna had been messaging him a lot, acting like she was his girlfriend. I said that's because she was his girlfriend and hung up. This was all too much. And then I remembered my mom had said the name Amy that morning. And this grave said Amy, and the headache came back, and I thought I was going to fall over. I told Joanna I couldn't handle this, something wasn't right. I told her I didn't want to talk anymore. I went home, and the first thing my mom said was that she'd seen a sweet young girl going towards Amy's grave, but she didn't recognize her. And then I looked around the hall, and there were family photos of me, my mom, my dad, and another girl. Was this Amy? Why couldn't I remember her? And suddenly it came rushing back. The man in the lab coat saying they were storing memories, implanting them, what if they just implanted my memories into Joanna by accident? And then Joanna called, and she sounded hysterical, saying she'd never had a sister, that her mom was worried about her, that Damien had called saying he was my boyfriend, not hers. And then I knew the medical experiment had gone seriously wrong. I called the police. I told them the address of the lab and said I thought there were people operating illegally there. An hour later, the police turned up at my door, saying there had been a fire, that the lab I mentioned had burned down and they couldn't find any information about it. I wanted to scream. What about my money? They completely tricked us. I told the policemen about the experiment, and they looked horrified and said there was no way this kind of thing was okay. Joanna and I both got taken to the police station and had to explain everything. And it turns out, she'd not been asked any questions about memories. She'd just been hooked up to a machine and said it had really hurt. And afterwards, her head had felt different. She still believed she had a sister called Amy who died. But then I explained that this was my memory, that they'd somehow implanted into her brain. It honestly feels like some kind of sci-fi horror story. And yet, this is my reality. The police are still investigating, and I really hope they find those criminals soon. The worst part of it all isn't that I didn't get my money. It's that I can't remember my sister. I feel like they stole my memory and gave it to Joanna. It must be pretty bad for her though, because she has this fake memory in her brain and it tortures her. As for Damien, he was my boyfriend all along, and now that Joanna understands what happened, she's backed off. This is seriously messed up though, and I fear my life has been changed forever. Fingers crossed the headaches die down and no more side effects appear. How could I have been so stupid?